Now, we've spent a lot of time actually talking about rockets lifting up from the ground, going into space, but there are a few other ideas that have been floating around, which we're going to explore in the next few sections. And, and one of them has kind of been essentially some sort of space plane. Yes. So remember that most of the fuel in these rockets is to lift some fuel to exactly. further up. But we can already get uh, you know, 10, 15 kilometers up and are going quite fast with a highly efficient jet engine. Yep, and a plane and that jet engine will actually come back and land. So that part is reusable. Is reusable. So this is the Pegasus rocket system, yep. which basically will drop off an aircraft. Um, and th this is for a while a competitive small, yep. small rocket launch system. You can't launch a very big thing no. off this. This is the Virgin Galactic approach. Um, which has succeeded in launching suborbital flights. That's right, where you actually have a plane attached to the actual space plane that drops from it and then goes off into your suborbital space. Yes, so the the, uh, the plane flies as high as it can, then drops the bit in the middle, which then unfolds and flies up. Yep. Um, and so this is a, a good technique. Um, this is the uh, Virgin Orbit, Orbit, which recently went in the last week or so at the time of filming went bankrupt. That's right. After failing to launch from the UK. And, and again, it was the idea that, well, now that satellites themselves have become a bit smaller, those initial problems may not be as big of a deal. We could still put, then in some cases, they've launched six satellites on some of these things. And they got four out of six into orbit, which isn't bad. But they had one of those similar problems. They weren't launching fast enough. They weren't developing more. They had some high profile failures and luck wasn't necessarily on their side. And Elon Musk is fairly scathing about this. Oh, he, yes. In a talk, he was saying that basically this big aircraft is your first stage. Yep. So why not just use a first stage? Yeah. They reckon that there are some benefits to launching up. You can have that bigger expansion nozzle because you're firing at a higher altitude. But he thought the extra complexity yeah. of having, th th that's only you know, like a 5% benefit. Yep. And the extra complexity of now having an aircraft on a runway and having to mount it and... The dropping mechanism, the ignition mechanism, yes. A lot of those design things are... All this complexity yeah. was um, made it far worse than just have a nice vertical rocket launch on a small pad. Yep. And I think he's kind of proved his point at this point. That's right. I mean, Virgin Orbit's the closest that it's gotten. It's, as he said, just at the time of filming, has now gotten rid of all of its employees. Yes. So there were ideas for a while about uh, hypersonic air breathing yes. scramjet space planes. That's right. The idea would be that you'd actually use the atmosphere as much as you possibly can. You'd have some sort of scramjet that would, so you only carry your fuel, not your propellant for most of the way up, yep. burning it in a, some sort of hyper, hypersonic uh, system with the, the fuel and then only switching over to rocket for the very last stage. That's right. And at the time of speaking, there's a massive flap about the Russians and the Chinese have hypersonic weapons, America has to have it as well, which is a bit reminiscent of the old Sputnik <laughs> crisis. Um, but again, this is a very complicated procedure yeah. and trying to get the scramjets to work reliably and efficiently is very hard. And uh, there's nowhere near competitive to what SpaceX can do at this point. That's right. And not in any in the foreseeable future as... In as principle, it might be wonderful. Whether the complexity is just going to kill you, I don't know. Yep.